Welcome everyone, Snowby here with a slightly different guide to the normal ones. Some would say that this is a things I wish I knew video, it's not a beginner's guide, but there are certainly aspects of this video that are tips for beginners. A number of these techniques many players may not know, even though they've been playing the game for quite a while. Right, let's get into it. Tips and techniques I am glad I know. Tip number one. If you don't have a watch yet, instead of going out of your way to visit a trader or find a vending machine somewhere out there to see what the time of day is, instead, purchase a vending machine. Available to everyone, buy a vending machine and you can take that personal state-of-the-art clock to your base. No need to guess anymore. Also, if you're that desperate, your personal timepiece is also actually portable. So take it on camping trips or your favorite high rise when you're out and about and just plonk it down. Just remember, use a land claim block so that you can pick it up again. Carry frame blocks or cheap wooden blocks around with you in your toolbar for an easy escape. If you're starting to get swamped by zombies or you don't really want to run away, you can often escape by quickly placing the frames next to a wall or jumping up while you get a breather or have a chance to kill your attackers. As long as you are three blocks high, this can help in those times when you are trying to reload still and are getting swamped. Tip number three, don't challenge a cow until you have a way of killing it. Especially for the novice out there, this beefy bovine may look delicious, but can be quite a challenge in the early game. So be aware. Bicycles are cheap and easy to make. Many don't know it yet, but in version 4, you do not require any skill points to make them. You can craft them from day one if you have the correct resources and a workbench, and even without a wrench or a hammer. The final product itself can be assembled without a workbench. I realize the bike is generally considered rubbish, but it's still better than walking. But people skip it as they don't wish to waste the skill points or resources, especially two tires, which can be a pain to obtain. Often the ingredients for that first vehicle are tires, which brings me to my fifth tip. Wrench those tires to get tires. In Darkness Falls, wrenching tires is an excellent way of obtaining wheels for the many cars and bikes Darkness Falls has to offer. Is the shotgun your favorite play toy? However, you don't like using it due to its screamer heat generation. Well, besides the automatic and rifle weapons, since version 4, shotguns and magnums can take a silencer. Yes, you can put a silencer on a shotgun. I realize it's quite a novel concept for some of us, but in this day and age of screamer and heat map problems, firing a shotgun generates a lot more heat. So people may avoid these guns. If you can get your hands on a suppressor, you can help reduce that heat significantly with a silent shotgun. Speaking of heat, Let's get this myth out of the way. Many people believe all forges are a massive heat producer, so your friendly screamer is going to be popping around a lot more often due to them. Yes and no in Darkness Falls. I normally run four to six advanced forges without any heat issues. I ran these 19 advanced forges, and after a day, it was still on zero heat. However, the wood burning forges will produce heat, though most people are never creating forge farms with these anyway. At advanced forge level, don't worry about attracting screamers. If you don't want to use turrets as a warning, you could use something that many people have forgotten about. Speakers. Did you know that speakers do not alert zombies, but does work as an alarm for you? I think many of us believe a speaker sending out an alarm works the same as a car alarm in Darkness Falls. Well, it alerts the zombies. However, speakers make no difference to nearby zombies, so you can use them as a warning system without alerting the monsters. Tip number nine, you cannot place a land claim in a trader anymore. However, you can get very close by. This allows you to get close enough to steal the turrets. So for a few stone, you can make off with quite a nice haul of turrets just by putting four land claim blocks around the trader and then steal the turrets. People go with a farmer class as food is considered a problem at the start of the game. This anxiety often pushes people to take the farmer class at the start, especially as you still need to find a pot and a grill to even get your basic stuff going. Often people don't know that there are a few basic ingredients that can be obtained and used with only a campfire. Potatoes and apples can be picked and used without a pot or grill. These two ingredients make life considerably easier when you are starting off on the first day or two. Next, dig up some dirt and while you wander around, craft clay bowls. Clay bowls can be used for cooking tin stuff that you buy from a vending machine or from loot. More importantly, you can add a clay bowl or a stack to your toolbar and left click on a tree. This will give you sap. Sap currently provides five water and you don't even have to worry about boiling it. Just make bowls while you walk around and drink 
and you have no reason to die of thirst or even get close to that. If I knew this when I first started playing Darkest Falls, I wouldn't always be frantically wandering around looking for glass jars at the start of a game. Still on food, beehives are pretty OP for now. With just one point in either the perk or the class, you can make cheap beehives. Without any added requirements, no fuel or feed, you can have many jars of honey each day. This means no need to wander around hitting stumps. And as there is a 50% chance of the honey failing in Darkness Falls when uh, curing your infection, you will have lots of honey to make up for those unsuccessful attempts. Also, the honey provides a small portion of food and is a great source of early jars if you haven't been finding them in loot. Pretty sure something will probably get nerfed here or balanced. So expect an incoming change sometime, however, use it while you can. Prior to Alpha 20 and version 4 Darkness Falls, many didn't bother with the Trader Captain. These days he has been swapped to the White River Scout. Often people still don't know about the stuff that she sells. Tip number 12 is the Scout sells extremely cheap splints, casts and low-end bandages. I was watching a Darkest Falls Neebs gaming video the other day with someone with a broken leg and he was only thinking about going to the main trader to go and buy a cast. He was so close yet so far from a cast that only cost 10 dukes. So remember the scout Goodbye. sells very cheap medical items. Caitlin is a trader of goods that has been around for ages in Darkest Falls. Located in the wasteland, many don't know she is someone you can purchase high-end goods from without any reputation. Some of those sought-after items like tool and dice sets, workbench tools, massive stacks of steel and other resources, one of the helicopters and also mastery books. She used to be the person also that you could buy a laser workbench from, but now that is Jen. So finding Caitlyn is a good way of obtaining many items in the game, as long as you have the Dukes to cough up. Speaking of mastery books, not that it is difficult to get skill points in Darkest Falls, but don't waste skill points on masteries. With 30 trader reputation, you can buy them for 100,000 dukes from the trader. You can also craft the books, that takes many skill notes. So, this is why buying them from either Caitlin or from any of the other traders is a good option. Check out the frequently asked questions section in the Darkness Falls Discord for information on which trader sells whichever masteries. Tip number 15. When you are not bulk adding items to storage, but you want to add only certain items, use the shift click option. So if you're adding various items, like just ore to this container, don't drag and drop, but hold shift and click the item. It is much faster and less tedious. Also, if you're like me, where you prefer items to be arranged in a certain order, instead of adding to the storage and then rearranging them after, or if you don't want to use the auto sort, you should add one item of each stack. So, if this is steel and an iron and titanium storage, I first add at least one of each item to the container in the order that I want them to appear. Now, each time I come here and I dump stuff in, I just shift or bulk click and everything goes in the order I want, automatically completing each stack. Now, I don't have to rearrange it every time I put stuff in. Just a tip for those who don't like to auto sort and manually arrange everything every single time they put things into their storage. When playing Darkness Falls, you will start obtaining many similar items. Now, there is lots that you can do with those items, but often people forget that they can combine items to make a better quality one and to repair it. Dump items into your workbench to upgrade them and also fully or partially repair the final product. The normal workbench for items up to level 40 and combine items up to level 80 in the laser workbench. Don't forget, remove your mods from the item first, otherwise you will lose them. So tip number 16, combine items to thin out all the junk that you end up with and to easily repair if you don't have many repair kits yet. For those that don't know, you can open your ammo rounds. Currently, there doesn't appear to be a way to make this automated, unless, well, you could use a macro. You just have to click each one and open it. Something about it not working as intended if you set it up to open all rounds in one go. So, it is a pain to open them up one by one. A helpful workaround for this and to make it go faster is to select the stack of rounds with your left mouse button. And while you left click to open, you also press the A key. This should make it go faster while opening. Most of us know how to cheese the game with the crouch option. You go into crouch, in a one block hole and you will be able to view through the map and even find buried supplies that way. However, this is considered cheesing and some may not like this particular method. 
Many don't know, but there is a military tablet from the Science Mastery. A legitimate game technique to easily find buried supplies is to use the military tablet. Just by clicking on it, you can view the zombies, but you can also see the location of the buried treasure. Finally, something we all know is demon fireballs are a menace. There is supposed to be a new feature where shooting a demon with a weapon that stops the health regeneration will also stop their fireballs for 90 seconds. However, I've yet to see this working, so if someone can confirm to actually have seen this feature, then great. I've never seen a confronted demon shot with a legendary or laser weapon stop its fireballs. For now, my suggestion and tip is to watch the demons, which can be pretty difficult in the heat of battle. However, especially for the new players out there, when a demon is about to shoot or launch a fireball, you will notice that all have a particular animation before the fireball launches. All of them have a wind-up motion that can be easily spotted before they launch that fireball at you. Shooting them while they do this will actually interrupt their fireball, even the incubus, and delay them until the next one. You can also use this animation to anticipate a fireball and then sidestep it. If you shoot them at the correct time, during that wind-up motion, it can give you a chance to get closer to kill them, reload your weapon during the delay, or turn around and run. Well, that is it. Please feel free to add any tips and helpful techniques into the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.